Let's make Cookie Clicker, and let's make a version of it that works on both your PC and your mobile device. Ready? Let's go. I'm gonna change my aspect ratio to nine by 16. And let's create a new image for our background and change the canvas to scale with screen size. And there's only three sprites I'm using for this whole project, our button, our background, and our cookie. I got them all off of Canva. Let's put our background into the image component and I'm gonna darken it a bit and scale it up. Next, I'm gonna create a Text Mesh Pro text game object and we'll need to import the essentials if we haven't already. And we want one for our cookie count and one for our cookie per second count. I'd like to use a font called Merryweather, link is down below in the description, and to create a new font that we can use in our game, we can go to Window, Text Mesh Pro, Font Asset Creator. Plug the text in there and hit Generate Font Atlas. And let's use that font on all our text. Now, our game object is going to be separated into two screens, the main game and the upgrades. In the main game, create a new image called Cookie, and let's plug our cookie in there. Let's also add a button, which we'll use to open our upgrade screen. For the upgrades, first off, create a button at the top, which we'll use to go back to the main game. Then we're gonna create a new scroll view. We don't need the horizontal bar. You can get rid of it in the scroll rect component. And let's change this to auto hide and bump the scroll sensitivity way up. Now in the content, we want everything in here to line up in a column. I like the grid layout group component and we'll constrain it to one column. We also want this content to scale dynamically, so let's add a content size fitter with the vertical fit to preferred size. Now add an empty child, which will have two things, a button and an image. I'm gonna add two text components to this image, and they're both just gonna be used to display info about the upgrades. And we don't want anything on this image to be a raycast target, so uncheck those. And we're gonna add these in at runtime, so we can actually make this a prefab and then delete it out. Now, to get this cookie clickable, let's add a button component and get rid of transitions. To control it, we're gonna need a game manager object. Here are the variables we're going to need. And we made this class a singleton for convenience. So when we run the game, we wanna update our cookie UI and the cookie per second UI and make sure the upgrade canvas is off and our main canvas is on. Now when we click our cookie, we're gonna increase our current cookie count and take any upgrades into account. I also want the cookie and the background to pop whenever we click it, so I installed the DoTween package, which is free. And I'm gonna pop the scale up and then back down for both. Let's plug that in and test. Great, but the problem is, is that we don't even have to be clicking on the cookie to get points. So to fix that, create a script called cookie alpha threshold and change the alpha hit test minimum threshold. And make sure you check read write on the import settings as well as change the mesh type to full rect or this is not going to work. And now that's fixed. Back in the cookie manager, let's create methods for our two buttons so we can navigate to the appropriate screens. Okay, now let's add some upgrades onto the upgrade screen. First, we need to create a script for our button, which is just gonna hold some references. Next, create a script called cookie upgrade. 
this will be a scriptable object and it's an abstract class because we'll actually apply the upgrade in a child class later on. And we're going to create two more scripts, one for each type of upgrade. The cookie upgrade per click is just going to increase our cookie per click upgrade amount from our cookie manager. And before we can make our second upgrade, we need to create another script called cookie per second timer, which will be attached to a game object we'll spawn in whenever we purchase the second upgrade. So let's turn this into a prefab. So it has a timer, and when that timer is up, it increases our cookies and starts over. Now we can actually spawn that in and plug in the actual cookies per second amount, and then update the UI for the cookies per second. Great, now I'm gonna create six cookie per click upgrades and six cookie per second upgrades and just scale up the prices and rewards for each of them. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna spawn a prefab of each upgrade object that we made for each of these. And we'll need to fill in the on click event at runtime. So let's create a method for that in our cookie manager, which, if we can afford it, calls the upgrades, adjusts our cookies and UI accordingly, and increases the upgrade cost and UI. Now, finally, create a script called initialize upgrades and add it to your game manager. And for each upgrade, we'll spawn in a button for it reset the cost, set the text, and set the on-click event. And let's make sure we call that in our cookie manager in the awake function. Now we can click on our cookie and buy more upgrades. But we want to keep these numbers clean, and what I'm going for is no decimals up to a thousand, and then show only one decimal place with a K after a thousand, and M for a million, B for billion, and so on. So let's add a script called cookie display to our game manager. We can add as many suffixes as we want. And we'll loop through and divide it by a thousand to get it displaying correctly, and then change the text we pass in based on how much it is. So this goes up to a quadrillion, but you can easily add more in there if you want. Now in our cookie manager, let's grab that component. And instead of updating the text here directly, let's put it through our cookie display script first, which will format it properly. And let's also do the same thing with our cookies per second. And there you go, it's formatted much more nicely now. Next, let's get some text spawning in when we click on the cookie. I'm just gonna create a simple object pool class, which is more performant than just instantiating and destroying the text. So we'll get a list of our pool object info class. And we wanna be able to spawn text and return text. So let's look through the list of pools and see if we have a match. And if we don't, we'll create one and add it to the list. Next, we need to see if there are any inactive objects in the pool. And if not, then we need to actually create an object, but otherwise we can reactivate it from the pool. And to return it, we'll grab the name and remove seven characters to get rid of the clone in brackets at the end and then find the corresponding pool and add it back in. Great, now let's get some pop-up text showing up when we click the cookie. So we're gonna create a new TextMesh Pro text UI object, 
and add a script called popup text to it. Here are the variables we're going to need. And we'll create a simple factory method to create instances of this text, which will spawn one from the pool, handle positioning, and call the init function when it's created. And in the init function, we're going to set the text and set a velocity that's random on the X. And in the update method, we're going to move the text and fade the alpha of the text over time. And once the alpha is zero, we'll return this object back to the pool. And since this is constantly enabling and disabling, we need to reset a few things in the on enable method. Now back in Cookie Manager, we can just call popuptext.create and pass in the amount. Now let's turn this into a prefab and delete it and make sure all our references are filled in over here and make sure to turn off Raycast target on this text. And now we should see some nice text popping in and that comes from a pool here. And finally, the background's looking a little bland, so let's get it moving. Make sure you set the sprite's wrap mode to repeat and make sure you have a nicely tiled background. Create a new sprite unlit shader graph and open that up. We're just gonna plug in the main text and tile the sample of that. We'll use time multiplied by vector two, which you can default to 0 0.05 on the X and the Y and plug that into the offset. Now create a material from that shader and plug that into the material slot. And now our background should be scrolling nicely. And in file build settings, I'm gonna change my platform to Android. And to make sure that it all fits, I'm gonna to go to Windows, General, Device Simulator, and search for my device, which is really, really old now. Adjust any UI elements if you need to get it to fit correctly. And now you can build. And if you install the package on your phone, you've just made Cookie Clicker for mobile. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you liked. And my patrons get access to the source files of every tutorial ever made on this channel. So if that interests you, then head on over to Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, Ian Oral, and 60 Plus Maker, as well as our early access patrons Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Neil, Ben Kerberger, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, Anastasia Shamalina, and Petter Yurichek. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.